Welcome to the Sunbeam Alpine channel. Here you will find over a hundred videos showing how to maintain, restore and improve Sunbeam Alpines. We make the videos to help all Alpine enthusiasts. So please use them, like them and subscribe to the channel. Today at Oily Puddles Garage we will be fitting twin electric cooling fans to an Alpine, testing some fans and illustrating how some of their instructions are incorrect. In the 1960s the Alpine's mechanical fan was adequate but modern petrol burns hotter than old-fashioned leaded four-star and the roads are much more congested so it's a good idea to fit an electric fan or two and today we are going to fit two together with the relays required to have a twin fan cooling setup on your Alpine. A mechanical fan mounts on the water pump and it pulls air through the radiator. It spins slowly when you're stationary or moving slowly when you really need lots of cooling air. And it spins quickly when you're driving fast and don't really need a fan at all. This is far from ideal. Many people, including us, have added an electric fan to supplement the original. Alternatively, you can remove the original entirely and just have an electric fan. The advantages are that the engine will be quieter, will spin up quicker, and will actually be a couple of horsepower more powerful. But if the electric fan fails, you're in trouble. Before we start with the fans, there are some other things that you can do to improve cooling of your Alpine. Some years ago, Tiger Tom and Chuck King did a series of aerodynamic tests to find the best way to cool a Tiger. They found that having an electric fan about one inch away from the radiator gave better cooling than having it right next to it. And one of their key findings was that if you block the horn openings, you prevent hot air from being recirculated through the radiator. If you want to read more about their research, there's a lot more on the internet about it. Just pause the video and make a note of this link. This car has had the horn openings welded up. On this car, the openings are sealed with aluminium sheet. Both methods solve the problem and you will notice an immediate improvement in cooling if you block the horn openings. Locating the carburetor directly above the hot exhaust is not ideal. If you pipe the air intake for the carburetor from the front of the car, you will have cooler, denser, air going in and this will improve performance. The fans that we are using today are churned out in their thousands in China. They come with different branding and packaging but basically they're the same and they cost around 18 to 20 pounds here in 2022. They usually come set up as a sucker fan. They come with cable ties for mounting to fit directly onto the radiator and some have instructions that state simply reverse the polarity to make this fan into a blower. That is not correct, as you will see in a moment. A sucker fan mounts inside the engine bay, behind the radiator and in front of the engine. It sucks air through the radiator to cool it. Here you can see the air being sucked through and a strong draft being created. A pusher fan sits in front of the radiator in the nose of the car and pushes air back through the radiator to cool it. Now 
Now on this fan, we have simply changed the polarity so that earth is the supply wire and the supply wire is now earth. The fan is now rotating in the opposite direction, but the airflow is much less than it was when set up as a sucker fan. The air looks like it's actually being sucked into the fan from both sides. It will cool, but not as effectively as when it was set to be a sucker. Now we want our fans to be mounted to the car, not to hang on the radiator. We want no obstructions to the airflow and we want both of them to push. We made cardboard templates to determine exactly where each fan would sit in the radiator opening. We use cardboard to mock up the brackets that we're going to need and then we'll mark these on some strip metal and we'll make brackets to match. We'll simply draw around the cardboard template and make the mounting brackets, rust proof them, paint them, fit them to the car. And we also made up spacers to set the fans back so that we would have that one inch gap between the fan blades and the fins of the radiator. Pause the video if you need to look at the wiring diagram. Wired like this, both fans will come on if the thermostatic switch is tripped because the temperature gets too hot or if the override switch is depressed. The Kenlo has slightly odd wiring annotation. I've included it here for anybody that has Kenlo switch and Kenlo fan and wishes to add an additional fan. This is what we've got on the red car in this video.